Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Deuteronomy 8 Verse 1 All the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do, that you may live, and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. Observe, dear friends that the Lord demands of his people universal obedience to his commands, all the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do. Christians, although they are not under the law, are under the sweet constraints of love, and that love incites them to complete obedience, so that they desire to leave undone nothing which the Lord commands and this obedience is to be careful as well as complete. All the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do. Not only do them, but do them with care. When the commandment applies to a certain duty, obey it in full, both in the letter and in the spirit, for there are numerous and weighty blessings attached to obedience, not of merit, but of grace. If we walk carefully in the fear of God, we shall find that in keeping his commandments there is great reward. 2. And you shall remember all the ways which the Lord your God led you these forty years in the wilderness, to humble you, and to prove you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments, or not it is well to have a good memory and that is the best memory which remembers what is best worth remembering. There are many things which we would gladly forget, yet we find it hard to forget them. They often rise up at most inappropriate times and we loathe ourselves to think that we should ever remember them at all. But, whatever we forget, we ought always to remember what God has done for us. This should excite our gratitude, create deep humility and foster our faith both for the present and the future. You shall remember all the ways which Jehovah your God led you these forty years in the wilderness if forty years of the Lord's leading should make some of us bless his holy name, what ought you to do, my brothers and sisters, who, perhaps, are getting near the fourscore years? What praise and gratitude should be rendered by you to him who has led you all your life long? Look what God intends to accomplish by our wilderness experience. It is, first, to humble us. Has it had that effect? Then it is to prove us. Ah, I am afraid it has had that result, and has proved what poor wretched creatures we are. That has been proved in our experience, again and again. It is also that it may be known what is in our heart, whether we will keep God's commandments or not. 3. And he humbled you, and suffered you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you knew not what a wonderful sequence there is in these short sentences. He humbled you, and suffered you to hunger. One would think that the next sentence would be, and allowed you to starve. No, it is, and fed you with manna. They had the better appetite for the manna and were the more ready to see the hand of God in sending the manna because of that humbling and hunger which God had previously suffered them to endure. Fed you with manna, which you knew not. The very name by which they called it was, manna, or, what is this? For they knew not what it was. And fed you with manna, which you knew not. 3. Neither did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. God can make us live on bread if it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. He does make our souls to live upon his word. He could, if so it pleased him, make our bodies live by that word without any outward sustenance whatever. 4. Your aim and waxed not old upon you, 
neither did your feet swell, these forty years. What a wonderful experience the Israelites had in the wilderness. They were always fed, though in a waste howling wilderness, dry and barren. They always had water following them from that stream which flowed out of the flinty rock, from which you might sooner have expected to strike fire than to obtain water. And as for their garments, they did not wear out. They had no shops to go to and they were unable to make new clothes in the wilderness on account of their frequent moving to and fro. Yet they were always clad and, though they were a host of weary pilgrims, marching backwards and forwards for forty years, yet their feet did not swell. Oh, what a mercy that was! He keeps the feet of his saints. Has it not been so with you, also, dear friends? You have said, What shall I do if I live so long and if I have to bear so many troubles, and make so many marches through the very valley of the shadow of death? What will you do? Why, you will do as you have done. Trust in God, and go on. You shall be fed and you shall be upheld even unto the end. 5. You shall also consider in your heart. Note that we are not only to remember God's dealings with us, but we are to consider them, to ponder them, to weigh them. Consider in your heart. 5. That, as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Do I speak to anyone who is just now under the rod? Consider in your heart, then, that God is dealing with you as a father deals with his sons, for what son is he whom the father chastens not? How would you like to be dealt with? Would you rather be without the rod? Then remember that if you are without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards? and not sons. Do you wish to be treated so? I am sure you do not. You wish to have the children's portion, so you say, deal with me, Lord, as you are desirous to do with those that fear your name. We are willing to have the rod of the covenant for the sake of the covenant to which it belongs. 6-8 Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to fear him. For the Lord your God brings you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat, and barley, and vines, and fig trees, and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. This is also the experience of the child of God, in one sense, in heaven, but in another and perhaps a truer sense, even here below. We which have believed do enter into rest. By faith we take possession of the promised land. And when a Christian gets out of the wilderness experience of doubting and fearing, and comes into the Canaan experience of a simple faith and a fully assured trust, then he comes into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat, and barley, and vines, and fig trees, and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, for God gives to his people not only all they need, but something more. He gives them not only necessities, but also luxuries, delights and joys. 9. A land wherein you shall eat bread without scarceness, you shall not lack anything in it when you live in communion with God and he brings you into the full enjoyment of the covenant blessings, then there is no scarceness with you, there is no lack of anything. 9. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you may dig brass, or, copper, silver and gold they had none, 
But then the princes of Sheba and Saba were to offer them gifts and bring them their gold and their silver. But if they had nothing for show, they had plenty for use, for iron is a great deal more useful metal than gold. And the copper, which they hardened into brass, was of much more service to them than silver would have been. God will furnish you, dear brothers and sisters, with all the weapons you need for the holy war. There may be no gold and silver ornaments for your pride, but there shall be iron instruments to help you in your conflict with your adversaries. 10. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. God permits his people to eat and to be full. But, when they are so, they must take care that they do not become proud, and that they do not begin to ascribe their profiting to themselves. 11. Beware that you forget not the Lord your God, in not keeping his commandments, and his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you this day. Whenever we see the word, beware, in the Bible, we may be sure that there is something to beware of. The point here to note is that our times of prosperity are times of danger. I remember that Mr. Whitefield once asked the prayers of the congregation, for a young gentleman in very dangerous circumstances, for he had just come into a fortune of five, oh 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 pounds. Then is the time when prayer is needed even more than in seasons of depression and loss. 12 to 16. Lest when you have eaten and are full, and have built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, who led you through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents, and scorpions, and drought, where there was no water, who brought you forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers knew not, that he might humble you, and that he might prove you, to do you good at your latter end. Why do we get these passages repeated? Surely it is because we have such slippery memories and the Lord has to tell his children the same thing over and over again, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little because we so soon forget. 17-20. And you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hands has gotten me this wealth. But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto your fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if you do at all forget the Lord your God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish as the nations which the Lord destroys before your face, so shall you perish. If you sin as they do, you shall fare as they do. 20. Because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God, 